Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all, especially our speakers, our audience members, participants, all for being here today. Uh, but before we begin, uh, Syracuse University acknowledges with respect the Onondaga Nation, fire keepers of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the indigenous peoples on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now operates. On behalf of the Department of Women's and Gender Studies, we also recognize the matrilineal Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the foundations of which have influenced feminist praxis in the region historically and contemporaneously. For more information, please visit the Onondaga Nation website uh, that is being dropped here. Next. My name is Himika Bhattacharya, and I work in the Department of Women's and Gender Studies, and I'm a member of the Democratizing Knowledge Collective at Syracuse University. On behalf of the DK Collective, Women's and Gender Studies, and all our generous co-sponsors today, please join me in welcoming our speakers, Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown, Jessica Robinson, and Dr. Blair Smith for their public lecture titled, I Feel Like Going to Soul Hot Today, Funk, Loops, and the Outside of Black Girlhood. Before I proceed to introduce our esteemed speakers further, I would like to offer some details about this event and express my gratitude to some folks whose labor has been central in bringing us all together here. So first, some event details. So this event marks the launch of a project titled Just Methods Reimagining Graduate Education Through Research Collaboratives, supported by a Q's grant at Syracuse University and to be implemented starting this upcoming academic year by current members of the DK Collective, along with graduate students on our campus, whom we hope to draw in starting with this event. The backdrop of the Just Methods project is the significant history of student protests against racial and social injustice at SU and other campuses, which demonstrate further need for faculty-student collaborations that reckon with how injustice permeates conventional academic training. So the current global pandemic and uneven economic and health crises only intensify these needs. Um, the Just Methods Project hopes to craft responses to these and center questions of inequality and injustice through collaboration. So given that the project's goal is to further develop methods that center the knowing practices of historically marginalized communities within and beyond the, beyond the academy, it follows naturally that we thought of Soul Hot and its founder and collaborators to launch it. We start the project with today's public lecture which will be 45 minutes long, soon as I'm done, followed by a Q&A session, which we will be moderating after the talk. The event schedule is being copied in the chat box as I speak. Please remember that at the end of the lecture for the Q&A to type your questions into the chat box um, at the end of the lecture. And then some of us will keep track and you know moderate and address, ask the speakers to address those questions. Also, as you might have noticed by now, we are dropping links for Soul Hot and other uh, as relevant, you know, access for more access and information as relevant and needed. Then I would like to express my gratitude to first Atiyah McGee, a doctoral student in the Department of Cultural Foundations of Education at Syracuse University, who in their role as a graduate assistant for the Just Methods Project, DK Collective, has been key central in the planning and execution of this event. Second, Suzanne Demokashed, administrative specialist in the Department of Women's and Gender Studies has gone well beyond her regular duties in supporting this event. Third, thank you, Sally Majorano, President Professional Reporting Services for providing CART services here today. I would now like to introduce our trailblazing feminist speakers. Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown. Dr. Brown is professor and the inaugural chairperson of the Department of African American and African Studies at Michigan State University. Brown grew up in Forest Park and Chicago Heights, Illinois, nurtured by bold and determined practices of collective possibility. 
she continues to activate home truths and bring others to futures of radical creative power and praxis through Saving Our Lives, Hearing Our Truths, Soul Hot, a collective Brown founded in 2006 to celebrate Black girlhood by meeting Black girls face to face and heart to heart. A Whiting Foundation Public Engagement Fellow, Brown's Black Girl Genius Week, BGGW, exhausts the rituals of Soul Hot to widen the cipher and experience the imaginative worlds, knowledge, and artistry that only occurs when Black girls, women, and femme are together as homegirls. BGGW has taken place in central Illinois, 2014-16-19, Columbia, South Carolina, 2019 and 20, and Chicago, Illinois, 2019 and 20. Nicknamed Dr. B by the homegirls home of Soul Heart, she has published two books, Hear Our Truths, The Creative Potential of Black Girlhood and Black Girlhood Celebration Toward a Hip Hop Feminist Pedagogy. Dr. Brown is an artist who earned a PhD from the University of Michigan and Arbor in political science with graduate certificates in world performance studies and gender and women's studies. She earned, grad she earned other stripes in the Soul Hot Cypher and the band We Levitate, a collaboration with band based Dr. Porsche Garner, Jessica Robinson, and Dr. Blair Ismail. You can find Dr. Brown doing the healing work of connecting with those who have resisted their own destruction since the beginning of time. You can find her laughing with black girls as they create knowledge about black girlhood in the same halls where they are routinely shushed. You can find Dr. Brown outdoors at work on her current project on black girlhood and nature, lending her dandelion spores to the wind. And the bio is poetic. Okay. Jessica Robinson, is a doctoral candidate at the Institute of Communications Research at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Her work centers on the work of Soul Hot, Saving Our Lives, Hear Our Truths, a collective which celebrates black girlhood in all of its complexities. Her work with Soul Hot began in 2007 and she continues to organize and explore black girlhood through highlighting aesthetics of the collective. Blair Smith, Dr. Smith, Blair, also known as Love and Loops, loves to play and make black girls' faces and sounds with black girls and those who love them. Her current dreams and work are obsessed with black girlhood celebration, black feminist poetics, sound, listening, and sensorial art and design with black girls locally and worldwide. Blair is an assistant professor of art education and gender and women's studies at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And before I hand the mic over, just one more thing, I would like to just add one more thing that I'm truly touched by the really unexpected but joyous ways in which several of us are connected beyond our geographical and institutional overlaps through our BIPOC feminist praxis, community, interconnections, and loving collaborations. Again, on behalf of the DK Collective and Women's and Gender Studies, I'm honored to host this event and would now like to invite our guests to begin. Thank you so much, Himika, um, Atia, and the whole DK Collective. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, to be back here, um, especially with my homegirls. So um, we're going to get it started. Um, get it started. Before we do, look at all that love Blair is getting in the chat. Like, <laughs> so I love y'all. I love y'all so much. I'm excited to, to get the conversation going. In the Truth That Never Hurts, writings on race, gender, and freedom, Barbara Smith takes us on a journey of critical conversations about multiplicities of identities and oppression and the struggles and joys of organizing with Black lesbian feminists during the 1970s through early 2000s. The most important theme in Smith's writing was the importance of collective organizing and working with people for freedom. I understand this particular Black feminist genealogy and organizing practice. Probably a little bit too far. In organizing practice, of criticality and celebration created for and by us 
not merely based on individual biological identity through my work with saving our lives, hear our truths, so hot. In So Hot, we look to Smith and other Black feminists and women writers and artists as a foundation for organizing critical and celebratory spaces for Black girls and women across the difference. We utilize and bring their names, texts, art, and visions into the spaces we make with Black girls. As a Black feminist artist and scholar, my dissertation project and my continual project is to look to Black feminists and women writers and artists as a way to remember and continue our ongoing passion for Black women's studies, Black girlhood studies, and the rights to be knowledge producers who take creativity and relationships seriously. Collectivity in So Hot has several layers, organizing physical spaces for and with Black girls for Black girlhood celebration, knowledge production and music and art making. Organizing physical spaces for and with Black girls in So Hot has functioned dynamically across time, ranging from sessions with Black girls in libraries, boys and girls clubs, after school, and at other community institutions. The physical spaces created in So Hot also happen nationally and internationally with Black girls. Knowledge production looks like individual publications and books about Black girlhood celebration. It also looks like co-authorship amongst graduate students, junior and senior faculty, and non-faculty that challenge student mentor binaries, academic relationships, and isolation. Music art making in Soul Hot is also knowledge production and range from theater productions, film school, beat making and music recording, DJing, dance routines, poetry, concerts, critical role plan, art, photo exhibitions, and so much more. In So Hot, organizing, knowledge production, music and art <clears throat> that we make take, serious, take seriously intergenerational relationships between Black women and girls and what is created for making celebratory spaces that Black girls see as theirs. Our very own, we levitate Van Bay, so hot homegirl, Blair Smith, took care to document Black girl futuristic sonic subjectivities in her dissertation titled Cruisings, Crossing, and Care, The Sounds of Collective Black Girlhood, Freedom, and Genius. In that brilliant dissertation, Blair wrote, and I will quote at length, before our session that day, there had been an issue with one of the little homies and another student at the school. The girls brought energy from their fight to Soul Hot, and we dedicated our afternoon to role-playing difficult friendship scenarios. The scenarios took us through movement and imaginations that put us in practice of making difficult decisions for ourselves and our friends whether it be over a disagreement, jealousy, or resentment. The focus for the girls was on how to be the best friend they could be. How could they have their friends back, even in difficult situations, even when everything is telling them that they shouldn't. After acting out and making decisions on what they might do in a tough situation with a friend, they used our studio time for the day to write a song about friendship. The first line they wrote in the song's chorus, my friends got my back, my back, and that is a, fa a fact forever and ever, and that will be that, opens us up sonically to what Sharima Maraga describes as, quote, stretch or die, end quote. And I like us to take an opportunity to take a deep listen to the song the girls wrote in Soul Hot. Blair mix mastered and produced called friendship. Right, let me know if y'all cannot hear or not. I'm gonna make sure it's up. Okay, I'm gonna share the links. Five, six, seven, eight. My friends got my back. That is a fact. Forever and ever, and that will be that. Open us up sonically. Let's go. 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 Okay. 
Thanks for dropping the link so you all can uh, take another listen uh, more closely again uh, at your own time. What I need you all to know and to remember is that Soul Hot stretches me. <laughs> In a Black girl's ad lib, I hear word W H I R as levitation, directing us to a different way of taking it higher levitation. In their song about friendship, a creative response to a problem they had in school described by the administration as girl drama, I'm listening and learning how not to die in a trap intended to capture a black girl's genius by separating us from each other. Friendship with the ad lib and repetitive refrain of my back is another way. It echoes women of color preoccupations with facts as bridges, at least since this bridge called my back, who Blair pointed back to when Gloria Anzaldúa as forwarded by Tony K. Bambara. So Hot is not only dope because it creates the will to trust, meaning these girls have homegirls uh, who some might call adult women, adult men, adult non-binary geniuses who they can trust, but also they learn to trust each other and themselves. Black girls' friendship and the ways they actively create systems of mutual aid and support incite levitation. That we levitate seems as I love you in a place that says we should not. We levitate so hot band is in course with M. Jackie Alexander's pedagogies of crossing meditations on feminism, sexual politics, memory, and the sacred. Alexander wrote, and we <laughs> live out and concur, quote, the matter of the fact is that there is no other work but the work of creating and recreating ourselves within the context of community. Simply put, there is no other work. We cannot afford to cease yearning for each other's company, end quote. Soha asked us to radically imagine us hanging out with people who have each other's back as fact. And this levitation is a forever in the way that I've been cataloging since our fourth band Bay member Porsche Bay Garner sang it to us in We Levitate song titled This Is, which echoes Rufus and Shaka Khan's forever. And you must know that Shaka Khan is Jessica's favorite as it's sung in Ain't Nobody. And my favorite, No Name featuring Raven Lanae, we are also in there forever. Black girls promising forever in precarious times circulates frequencies that register black girlhood outside of value. Something, something that implicates you too, that turns suspension rhetoric into levitational praxis, capable of freedom and inspiring unfreedom from each other. So that sounds like a run up and not a run down. And this is just yet another example of Jessica's work on soul, hot, and care, which prompted the following formulation. 
according to Jessica Robinson, we levitate band bay, so hot home girl. One practice she learned from Soul Hot is to quote, tell the story like you care, and Jessica insists, and only tell the story if you care, which follows Alice Walker as she wrote it, quote, we care because we know this, the life we save is our own, end quote, which also brings us into conversation with Donna Haraway, who was following Octavia Butler and made it plain this way, quote, and as you care, you are changed so that your questions change and your partners are different, end quote. Keep choosing to change, that's for sure. <laughs> in 2008, my sophomore, year, my sophomore year as an undergraduate at the University of Illinois, um, after taking a course with my bandmate, uh, Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown, when she was still there, uh, I began working with the Soha Collective. So yes, since 2008, I have been working with, since 2007, actually, I've been knowing Soha, working with Soha. Um, in 2016, uh, the YMCA decided to host a community reads of um, Dr. Brown's book, Here Our Truths, which was released uh, the year before. Um, I was invited as a panelist um, because of my experience with Soha as an expert homegirl for many years. The panel included myself, another homegirl, um, Porsche, who is also our BMB, Porsche Garner, um, a student of Dr. Brown's um, and uh, another black woman um, who was a journalism professor from the university who writes on voice representation in media. This is important for another part of the story. Uh, the, title the title of the conversation was on Believing Black Girls, um, which was presented in the book um, by Dr. Brown. Um, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I was kind of eager to pick up this conversation because we've been having it for years and um, so high. One of my like most notable um, kind of points to trace back is um, homegirl Sherry Lewis, um, who is also um, another PhD through the Soul Hot Dr. Brown uh, pipeline. <laughs> um, uh, we were in Soul Hot. Sherry and Porsche are you know this girl's telling us this story. Yeah, and then, you know oh and this weekend and it went off. It was so crazy. It was so crazy. And then she finishes and she says, "Do y'all believe me?" And sh Sherry just Comments, as she can be. Well, yeah, we believe you because you said it. So that's a line. It always happens. Um, I came to the event so confident in this skill that we had gained as homegirls to know, you know, because you said it, um, is a Black girlhood tenant. And that um, it also is the thing so easy to miss because we know it, you know, it's law. Um, I was confident um, in what I know to be true because I learned it with and from a Black girl. We made space with and for. The panel is about the book. So therefore about Soul Hot, a thing that I know so certain because I was there. Um, so I'm, you, we are getting ready. We are about to um, rev up <laughs> for this uh, panel. And I recall um, the day before I was with, uh, I'm sorry, actually earlier that day, I was with Blair doing recruitment for Black Girl Genius Week. So the girl meets me and homegirl Blair, who had recently returned from the East Coast back to the Midwest. <clears throat> and um, we are, we're like, okay, you know, what's going on? What can everybody do? And she responds to us, do you, uh, we asked her, do you want to come to Soul Hot? And she says, I could do a bag bin. Y'all want to see it? I step back to make space for what seems like it will require some leg room. Blair gives her attention. We watch her spring, no permission no policing, just defying gravity and insisting on her body formation response. Importantly, our experience with this and many other lunchrooms is that they thrive on permission lines in particular order of discipline. I even feel like to walk the straight, to work the straight line when I was there and I'm grown and I do not go to school there. So a bag band is against all the rules. But she spun into the structure right in right in the middle of the lunchroom. I mean, a huge, that would be a huge no-no. Um, full of lines, permissions, rules for how our body should, should move to show us. I remember you. I trust you with my best. I will be back with more. And more importantly, in some ways, I think she was trying to see if we really were about what we said we were about. Do the talents have to be certain things or can I come like this? I get done telling the story. The crowd is unimpressed. They are confused. 
I tell the story again. The girl was eager to meet us. She was so happy. She threw her body up. She showed us this back bend. Uh, <laughs> I'm all excited, right? I'm giving, you know, giving the, giving the playback. And if for nothing else, I thought because this panel of sort, this panel was for so hot that people might, you know, they might just kind of pick up on it. But what followed was a story from another panelist on how much trauma black girls experience. And uh, just in case you forgot, don't forget white girls need love too. And I sat there with my truth. I had to tell the story again. I think it fell, it still feel flat for the unknowing. I was very defeated after that conversation, exhausted from constantly trying to talk about the humanity of black girls. That is that black girls exist in many different ways that are all a part of who they are, we are, maybe unable to stand still, maybe uh, seriously quiet, maybe curiously chatty, but definitely always as human. Sometime after the event, Dr. Brown wrote, um, wrote about what she witnessed at the gathering and sent it to me in an email. While the email was not in real time conversation, I imagine our conversation might go like this, Dr. Brown. Uh, Jessica, my student, Band Bay Sister Squad, is on the panel attempting to give the people an answer to the million dollar question, what is so hot? Those who do not get it, what, who do not get what it means to collectively organize, educate, and dream with Black girls, do not often take so high seriously, as much so that even after they've seen it, they pretend not to know and reduce it then to its cuteness. We are cute, but that's not all we are. To be reduced by um, a singularly cute or a program or intervention um, is incredibly short-sighted and violent. Dr. Brown, you saw what I felt in that room. The question of what is so high also asks a person who is hearing the response slash asks the question to think about black girlhood differently. It asks a person who wants to know what it is to interrogate what they thought about black girls before they hold, heard a homegirl's response. In this case, you should be listening for how I saw that girl. You should be listening for why she did a back bend. You should be listening for how Blair and I responded. You should be hearing that she saw us too. It's just as important as us seeing her. That's a way to see black girlhood. And also why Soul Hot is not a program or intervention. Soul Hot knows that the girl I saw is not a special star in comparison to the others. Soul Hot knows that when I saw her, I saw the possibility of what our time with the whole group could be. Soul Hot knows that the backbending girl is not exceptional, but proof that we are so much deeper than needing to be fixed. Comparisons to one another and being in need and also why. My choice to tell the story of the backbending girl was motivated, one, because I had just recently seen her. And because I'm in the practice of it all, I don't have to use an obscure example about something or someone I did not meet or did not know. So in the believing of Black girls of it all, I wanted to give an honest example I knew through experience. I wanted to be sure to tell a Black girl story that doesn't require a triumph or shiny star. Because really, we still got so much yet to learn about even seeing Black girls. An entire crowd missed a backman story and then nodded in agreement over trauma-filled stories that followed. They didn't know what to do with this. They just really didn't. It is because they weren't, is it because they weren't there? Is it because they didn't see it enough? Maybe if Bagman girl won an Olympic medal for her stunts, I could tell that story. If the story was a girl wanted me to show her a backman and she wrote to be Simone Biles, I could have maybe made sense for them. Or at the very least, not been stared at like I had lost my mind but maybe I have. The thing I love about Soul High's focus on terms like celebration and genius is that they make Black girls automatically the center without placing some kind of trauma response to the care for Black girls. While everything has its place and everyone has a contribution in the ways they want, celebration of the genius of Black girls gets us to the thing we really need to embrace. That we have been here doing it for generations on generations. There's no there's no urgent moment to save Black girls. We have been brilliant, innovative, and insightful. So hot is a force. It really requires something of people. They just don't, that they just gotta wanna give. And to be, and to be mighty and humble at the same time, and to be present and somewhere else, and to be tired and also still moving. For you, Blair, at the end of the day. I know that all of this work is also going to be for me. I'm so proud of you. Woo, back around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
gonna get it out. <laughs> I <clears throat> am so proud of you. <clears throat> for following your heart, your heart's calling. No matter the risk, <clears throat> no matter the unknowns, no matter the grief. <clears throat> Holding on to, to joy, lovers, dreamers, and your truths. <clears throat> Keep on Blair. Well, Blair, I'm so proud of you. What's at stake for me? I'm going to switch it up. And feeling so hot right now is always everything in our presence, in our heartbeat, in our life force to say, and I love you in the present moment. I love you, Jessica, in the present moment. And I promise I'm not going to sell Black girlhood back to Black girls, okay? So Jessica, please bring the phone. And that's big period. Whoo, <laughs> that's big period. <laughs> Whoo, in true uh, life fashion, I'm sorry, I'm distracted because I think my daughter's father forgot to pick her up from school. Um, just give me one second. Okay, we're on. This is so hot for real. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does it take to do so hot? It's what I'm talking about. What does it take to do so hot is the new what is so hot. <laughs> when I first started organizing with so hot, whenever I would go to a panel or even just talk to someone about the work I was doing, they would ask, what is so hot? Even then, I thought this work was so deep and dynamic that sometimes it was hard to answer. When a friend trying to understand my work would ask, I would give one answer. Usually, oh, it's about making space for Black girls to be creative together. When my colleagues in various departments would ask, I would answer, it centers Black girlhood as a practice. And at conferences where So High Squad was present, there were multiple answers to that question, which I can appreciate. Mine was usually something like, um, well, that's a question of the time. Mm -hmm. Well, so hot is about the girls or something to that effect. And while that is true, so hot is always, is also about the homegirls, which is why Blair is crying and why we love each other. It's about the homegirls too. I think this concept changed for me over the years. Um, notably because once upon a time what about the homegirls reflected as some kind of self-centered approach that felt like a lot of whining and personality disputes <laughs> and not enough focus on the girls or the work that we said that we were supposed to be doing um a kind of exchange of where the energy should be you know um but i do think that i was maybe way too hard on that because it it does matter um after all we are human beings working together um and some kind of conflict or the opposite love, all kinds of things uh, were sure to happen. Um, but importantly, homegirls um, are the people who make the space. And with that, the gifts and talents we bring to the space um, also comes with a whole bunch of other stuff, how we were raised, um, how do we learn the gifts that we have, what's important to us and so much more. So when Dr. Brown asks, what does it take to do so hot in our 2019 uh, documentary film that shattered glass during Black Girl Genius Week, that answer for me is as deep as the infamous, what is so hot? As I have been writing my dissertation, one of the questions that keeps coming up is what does it take for me to personally um, do so hot? Um, and it's posed by my committee members, which I'm really grateful for that I have committee members who think that it's important to ask me those kinds of questions, um, that they look at so hot as um, something uh, worthwhile to talk about, to think more about. Um, and so, yeah, and for the sake of highlighting uh, what's at stake and what's possible because of my work with So Hot. At the end of the day, what it takes for me to do So Hot um, is in the sensibilities of the work. It's in the, it's all of it is embedded in how the work happens. 
that it requires you to think outside of what the university requires and moreover in ways that it might not even recognize, but we do. One of the th one of those things um, that I've been thinking, um, one of the ways of thinking, making and knowing um, is through funk. Um, if you go to been to any of the recent Black Studies uh, conferences, they love to talk about funk. So, um, <laughs> so um, you know, but um, it, I, I have found that to um, be very so hot for me to think about um, funk um, and it, as it pointed to funk as like generative, but not about productivity and knowing, but not in a finite way. Um, and really just kind of thinking about the things that we do um, and how, how they have kind of happened over the years. Um, my very first encounter with funk is through my father though. Uh, my dad, a singer, drenched in sweat after every gig, uh, what I used to call the glow. The, the sweat is how the work is done, or as he tells my sister, I'm always ready. If I can't do this, I can't do nothing. However, my first moment with funk while working with young people was with a group of middle school girls in Chicago. This particular day was not an official so high day, but I was asked by my best friend's sister, the principal of the school, to do a day with the seventh and eighth grade girls for a lock-in. As the story goes, the teacher was leading, uh, was leading this day, had forewarned me that she was interested in um, having this uh, lock-in. She wanted me to talk about the juicy stuff, sex, danger, fighting, and the biggest of hers, hygiene. When I arrived at the school, my plan was to navigate around those topics um, because for one, I'm, um, I'm not gonna lead a session about hygiene, I'm just not gonna do it. Um, but also that, um, you know, I, I didn't know them. This was a group that I had just met. Um, unlike most of the time when I'm working with Soul High, like we usually have some time that we get to know the girls. It's the group that I did not know. Um, and, you know, that is pretty personal. That was none of my business. So, um, you know, once I got there, the um, teacher, went, I met her at the elevator, and when I hit the elevator, she passionately said to me, they are on fire today. And I responded, yes, but I misunderstood. She meant they were funky. The smell of puberty had clearly hit the lock-in, apparently, and I was prepared and I was prepared um, for the smells with my pre-pregnancy nose and expected that, that smell that I know so well. Because I had been doing so hot by meeting face to face with black girls in central Illinois, I was more than familiar with the smell of teen spirit. The funk is how you know you are in front of people who are moving, who are figuring out their bodies, who are alive. However, to my surprise, the room did not smell at all. When I walked in, I was greeted with a group of people and lo and behold, after all the panic and concern of the smells and attention, um, the girls' bodies might produce as a result of puberty. The girls had their own set of pressing uh, issues, which had nothing to do with that. After our round of intros, which consisted of exchanging new music, favorite things to do, fun facts about um, their friends, friends always come up uh, with the same urgency as the teacher, um, Tasha with the top bun and fresh Jordans asked me, is it time for questions? Because I got some girl. She asked me and consequently the whole room because everyone offered a response. What's the longest relationship you've ever been in? How do you break up with someone? I need to break up with someone. We all exchanged best strategies on how to do that. And the questions that follow uh, Tasha's were all about building and maintaining relationships, communicating with their parents, their peers, and, th um, and things that they like to do. We transformed the entire intention of the space. In this way, the funk we anticipated and had the intention to talk around actually provided a different kind of way to think about our bodies. And my conversations with them, what we did was create something funky for sure. In the way that funk is more concerned with paradigms of spirit and intellect that are not grounded in power. As Stalin's reminds us, and as we know in Soul High, funk is force, not power. I think of the force being present that day to stop us from wasting our time repressing the funk and more time talking about the things that were more pressing, most in front of us, most between us, and arguably things that would carry us further than the bathroom. Imagine that space of time being focused on deodorant, especially when I know Black girls buy down a Bath and Body Works every chance they get. I also think of the force showing through the teacher who invited me, 
I want to be clear that I understand her concern. We know the ways in which respectability has not gotten us out of the mess of racial capitalism, but we cannot deny what it affords due to those same forces. So as a teacher on the south side of Chicago, you are professionalized and socialized to help your students fit particular calls. Hell, you do it too, I'm sure. I think this is why funk feels so, so hot to me because it is imperative that we recognize the in-between, both and, and messiness of all of it. And this way, funk is for us. It says we might have to go with spirit on this one and not logic to get to the maybe something is here. When you are working publicly, you are faced with many great areas that are funky. Another example of this is our song, To Be Honest, which I call mixed messages because I'm black. I'm going to I'm going to play it and you will hear us talking about contradictions, being human in the messiness of it all. Like, is it going off or is it levitation? Is it chaos or is it celebration? I'm going to play it. I'm going to play a bit of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing. So. And me. And me. Plus the aliens in the back seat. I ain't the first bag lady. The higher to transform you. We create the space. We taking it to the next level. I want to burn it down and build it up. With our mixed messages, clear as day. I can't hold your contradictions. I won't run away. That's your fully human. You know, just wait, cause I'm a mom of four who no struggle in. But the victim stands, cause hey, I drop to hey, low hey, when I buy to hey, dance. And hey. that don't stop me from professing. Respect my imperfection while you work with me to become a we and amplify this here message. All the time, be to be honest, black girl, call for levitation. All the time, so be honest. Blair. Yes. Shout out to the flunk. That was beautiful. <laughs> so hot um has me thinking a lot about love and loops. Um, you know, we we do also egos, we do we do give each other names in so hot. And um I think what's interesting is that um when I came when I came into the band, I like I wanted a name. I was I was like, everybody else got a name. <laughs> I think it was Cecily at the time. It was like the first Black Girl Genius Week. And um, she was like, how about DJ B? Um, which I'm still, I'm, I'm, it's DJ B um, forever. Um, but as, you know, it's funny. When I, when, also when I first started, um, so I make beats. People know me as somebody to make music and sounds and stuff like that. Um, but like the first people that really like listen to my music or my loops, like, even be like, oh, we can make something to the <laughs> was we levitate, um, was the band. Um, and um like even the process of me thinking about well, what you know, I'm DJ B, but like also like I don't know, like what do I want to call myself? Like, what is that that means for me? Um, it's been really special to think about that with the collective. Um, and I don't, I mean, I there's all sorts of dope bands and music collectives, so maybe they they you know, do that and figure that those things out um, with each other. But um, love, loving loops and thinking about loops, um, I think um, more as an idea, a, 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 a method, you know, um, something that I do uh, with So High um, came about in around 2014, 15, when my mom passed away. Um, and um, I've been most concerned about love and loops as something that I do. Um, something that I do with We Levitate with So Hot with Black Girls um, and a way of being an imperfect person, lover in the world. Um, so I'm, I'm still thinking and writing about Love and Loops. It's a big part of my dissertation project. Um, 
I'm feeling what, what it does, what it helps me to remember um, in my heart, in my body. Um, it's been a way to feel the complexity of things. Um, as Love and Loops, also Blair. Um, it's also a, regi- a very um, Richmond thing. Shout out to the Richmond folks. Um, when I first came to it, I was like, oh, I want to like, I want to make beats. Um, and I was in conversation with So High with Dr. Brown's class at the time, a student at Syracuse, trying to figure out what that may- meant to do um, Black girlhood studies um, in, in Syracuse at that time. And so um, music was one of the ways that I was figuring it out. And so um, y'all were making like, I don't know, y'all were making like Black feminist t-shirts and button pins and so on and so forth. Um, and being into like the beat and the, the loop culture, you'll find a lot of like producers or beat makers who will, who will loop. Um, they'll do like music, they'll do like movies or, um, you know, different thinkers or speakers like over their loops. And so I was just like, well, what about Black feminist beats? Um, and I mean, at this point that like thinking about it sounds very corny to me. <laughs> But when I shared that with Dr. Brown, and when I shared that with y'all, you was like, "Yeah, we how how about that?" Um, and and this what we got we got this we got this band. Let's like let's do that. Um, so yeah, y'all the first people, um, <laughs> y'all the first people that I sent loops to. Um, you know, I think along with like thinking about where I come from, bringing that with me um, has been super important. So the loops is Richmond, but it's also my mom and my daddy and my sisters, my family. Um, It's the way that my mom reminds me um, to to come back home. Um, And for me, that just means where the love is. Um, I'm also thinking thinking with So Hot and Dr. Brown, thinking about loops and sound as a way um, to resist the ways we archive um, ways Black girls sound as loud or quiet, um, and the most important thing about them, and it's as, as the most important thing, thing about them, and instead an embrace and begin a wider repertoire of how Black girls sound as a potent ally creative source of knowledge that is employed as an organizing construct, construct that moves and affirms Black girls' lives with justice. So it has me thinking more about repertoire and archive. Um, I mean, you know, I'm definitely um, charged with keeping a lot of our sounds. <laughs> I'm even thinking about, um, you know, being like an a engineer and a mixer, of, a, 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 um, engineer and a, you know, a producer of, of sorts in that way. Um, so how it has um, made space for me to think about what that means, um, to hear, hear each other um, and to hear each other over and over again. Um, and it comes out, it comes out in things that we we speak. I'm I'm thinking about you, Dr. Brown, when you say going nonstop so hot, that's the loop. I'm I'm thinking about repetition as holy. Um, I'm thinking about you, Jessica, when you say, um, you know, so hot, so good, you gotta do it again and again. Um I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking also about my homies um, who remind me of, of how important the loops are. I'm thinking of Dr. View. Um, who's also connected to So Hot, um, who thinks my loops are amazing. It's not that I don't think my loops are amazing, but he reminds me to listen to them um, in new ways. Um, I'm thinking about our, our, our repetition as, as revolutionary. Um, I'm thinking about my sister. I'm thinking about Kamari um, and how she reminds me to take my time with loops um, to show care and how you make them in new ways. I'm thinking about Dominique, I'm thinking about Paris, I'm thinking about dancers and movement artists, um, Kamari too, who have me thinking about looping and repetition in new ways. I'm also thinking with different scholars, of course, Trisha Rose, um, being in a band um, and celebration, the repetition of that, um, and thinking with the band and how we think with Fred Moden um, and thinking what that means. Um, my dissertation had me thinking a lot about, um, and, and to be honest, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say it was hard. I think it just took me a while to get to thinking about um, what loops, what love and loops as an also ego, as a way to think about being with so high um, meant as a, as a researcher, as a method. Um, and I mean, yeah, the, it's it's written there. You, <laughs> Dr. Brown has has laid out many frameworks to what this is, has looked like, um, and so of so in my band days. Um, so I'm back here, <laughs> thinking about what it means, um, 
in my dissertation, um, I was thinking about how Soul Hot exposed me to making a sound both familiar to my roots and contemporary sounds that Black girls enjoy to hear and make. So it was the it was homegirls who believed in the sounds I made, however offbeat, however doing digital wrongly it was, however Richmond, Virginia it sounded, uh, who were committed to making music and playing it back, even if it sounded like we were underwater um, and, and still do, do <laughs> sometimes. My sound art practice would not be possible without homegirls and So Hot's belief in what I could bring to So Hot. They saw me as a DJ long before I could ever call myself one as an act of ethnographic disruption, vulnerability, and betrayal. Love and Loops and DJ B makes transparent you alongside the collective, you with a self in relation to the collective, your own preoccupations, personal experiences, creativity, and so on in doing the, the doing of this work in play. There's a couple of more stories I wanna tell. Um, is, is the story of um, Black Girl Dreams Week, South Carolina. Um, and it's funny, cause I feel like up until this point, um, I wouldn't say I've been scared. I think in being, you know, being with homegirls and listening with Black girls and what they listen to, I think I'm also interested in all of the sounds that interest them. So the, the YouTube beats, the, the like, the, the trap beats, like, I, I love that. I love bringing that to the space and choosing things, being a selector of sorts. And then they, they they like it or not. I can figure out what you know what makes them move, what makes them want to rap or record, um, which is a very very sacred practice. Um, we make sound in so many ways, but I do want to emphasize that being able to record our sound um, and record Black girl sounds is important and sacred and special. Um, is an intentional. So it's important to me to also have music that the band wants to rock to um, and also the girls. Um, so in Black Girl Genius Week, South Carolina, um, you know, I um, I was in, in charge of, of doing a, a music making workshop with the girls. Uh, I use workshop lightly. Uh, I'm, I'm most interested in, in what we make together. Um, and that particular day, I had a set of beats. I try to like bring my like trap beats and different types of beats, but I also play, um, I play one of my loops. Um, and I feel like up until that time, I've been a little nervous to, <laughs> to play my loops. I'm like, oh, they don't think that's whack. It's just a, it's just a beat that <laughs> repeats. Um, and so I played my loop. Uh, I played a couple of other things and they were like, nah, like what's, what's that? What's that? What's that loop? Like we want, we, we want that. Um, and the, the kind of the chorus or the, the looping melody for that, that song is, um, it goes what I love. Um, uh, I do it cause I like it and I won't let it go. Um, because I love to do it and the melody just sounds so smooth. Um, yeah, so what I love has me thinking about loops um, and love in new ways. Um, it has me thinking about what it means to do um, so hot and to, to continue to be and think what so hot means um, in this moment. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna play a little bit of what I love and fade it on out. There is more we don't know about Black girlhood than we do know. The song The Bird is Singing is a Black girl's contemplation. I want to suggest So Hot is the How, but the song itself provides the necessary shift for the future. One, 
Notes from Kickapoo State Park, Friday after school drop off in the morning, 11, 22, 19. I just had to go outside for answers. Found them, like always. Gotta bring back a gift like Gloria Anselzua did. Forms, sitting, stillness, looking present, space to face. What I'm making with fear. What form does it exist in? And what do I turn it into? This material is fear. Salandra's tweet, our babies are not trash. They have no place in dumpsters and landfills. October 27th at a lot like Sula. I cannot go to the park again without looking for remains political vocab from intimacy to stranger to intimacy, the search, the looking, the seeing, the oh-seeing. Was it falling or flying? Conditions of Black life, literally. Was it a leaf or a bird? Stillness of quiet on a fall brown day, color theory. Midwestern gray, an ideology of peace. Color combinations, brown, a history palette. Bluebirds cackle so damn loud, a siren. I took good pics on my iPhone. Two, catch me outside the norm. I went outside just in time because black girlhood became reduced and flattened to a hashtag logic of interaction that has no grip for meeting black girls who show up to so hot ready for us to be a new one together. Imagine a girlhood studies where the commodified thing was regarded as the new direction. I was livid. I became preoccupied with being outside, walking outside, observing the animals and plants among me. I wanted to get away from the reducibility of the digital that allowed folks to somehow come to Soul High with no snacks, say they wanted to work with black girls but did not produce enough nuanced texture for them to say, that desire notwithstanding, I remain afraid. It seems everyone wanted black girlhood without the black girls who knew and loved me so hot. Outside gave me space, ancient and ancestral and time, geological and present moment that I needed and I still need now. Then when I went outside, I fancied it as some kind of escape from soul hot when the organizing became too much. Source text, Maud Martha, quote, if the root was sour, what business does she have up there hacking at a leaf? End quote, Gwendolyn Brooks. The assumption is I'm an insider to the academy with an allegiance to a discipline. Wow, <laughs> so wow to me. I came to meet fear here to listen to its locomotion, to smell its burning embers, to ask how much of I am that also. To confront being alone, to confront being without the necessary thing, I may need to fight to come face to face with the force that is ever more insidious than I. The game begins only to be stopped by affirmation. I am all the brown too, take her in. The winds shout, sometimes gentle, other times not so subtle affirmation. I am not to be without, surrounded by waving hands, a non-blue that cannot be replicated affirmation. I am so deserving. In this moment, I am branch extending outward. I am sun, reflection, littering, waves of light after all. I am from a place that makes oceans of lakes. This need, this desire to go alone, to bless the quietness of my own mind, making decisions <laughs> with June Jordan is a part of who I am. We are a part that I am making. We are the time to hold once again, to nurture, to smile at, to say, I remember you, Tata Bug, beautiful, sensitive, curious, observant, cry baby, spiritually aware. Touched by spirit and new addition. We meet again after all these years. And I'm so glad to see you remain wild like the wind. Shout out, Abby Lincoln. What is your sense of freedom tied to 
materially. What if oceans are not oceans and lichens are forever? Three, to be held in her hands, used as tool and material, to shape a world where waves are edges, to keep, make popping, cheap, accessible, full of resource synthetic materials. Who knew of its revolutionary potential? Madam C.J. Walker, Richmond, and beyond it before that. How could an Atlantic people ever forget? We can't, and every day this world is made, this O scene between two black femme bodies holding unpronounceable words, externalities of clear coated flesh to practice a loving touch, invitations of laughter, sustained seriousness, hair care. You got us love us. You got to love us like that. And that's me and my daughter. Now I am outside. I sense black girlhood in the air, even when at first I missed the carbon. Today, I'm thinking of them together, where what we with Black girls have produced in excess, where we as a species are never to be the same. Trevor Ellison identified phantom Black as one source of energy, and I believe there are others. At 18, Lauren Olamina, the protagonist of Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower, faced a choice between living in a violent, disintegrating neighborhood or starting an entirely new arrangement of relations she called Earthseed. Lauren decided, quote, I'll have to go outside, end quote. Into Zaki Shange, Sassafras, Cypress, and Indigo, three sisters named after trees who aspire to sound like birds in need of, quote, a little wildness, end quote. Literature, lived experience, the entanglement of Black girlhood and nature is inexhaustible. I am always looking for under-examined displays and networks of power, collectivity. The largest vision of this new work opens up a radical poesis of Black girlhood that affirm and emphasize the revert between Black girl and womanist ecologies as old, new, and available means for revealing and reveling in affect, power, and aesthetics, which are I believe necessary to bring more of us into a future present of our own desires. There is more about black girlhood that remains unknown than known. This is the search for power, probably love, some delight, much surprise in the unknown questionable daffodils of black girl life among other living things, melodies, funks, possibility, and presences. Thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Himika Bhattarada and Dr. Susan Demacher Shed, and let's give everybody Dr. Dr. Atia McGee, the Department of Women's and Gender Studies and the Democratizing Knowledge Collective, all of you who uh, are with us right now, all 84 of you. Uh, we are looking forward to our most favorite part, and that is to be uh, always in conversation. Again, I'm going to ask Suzanne and Himika to come join us and help moderate the questions and answers. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown, Dr. Smith, and uh, Jessica. Um, and yeah, I'm going to start reading out the questions. So I believe folks, you know, I think at the start I had said to type it in the chat, which is fine. If you're typing there, then one of us will track there. And then in the Q&A, um, under the Q&A tab, the first question that has already been typed in a while back, I think, mm -hmm. is um, what can be told in music, illustration, photograph, thinking here of doing digital wrongly, and other forms of art that cannot be said written in more traditional forms. How do these creative productions function as a way of speaking to the unspeakable or even the unimaginable? So it's this question is from Natalie L.A. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, do you want me to, I think it's already typed up here, right? In the mm -hmm. Q&A, if you, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I guess my, 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 um, thank you for the question. Um, I think for us, um, and thanks for uh, mentioning the doing digital wrongly. Um, also like, I, I think it's, it, that is the purpose of it. Um, you know, the, the way that I think of, um, I work with uh, doing digital wrongly and, and what we have done, uh, what we levitate um, is to, to really kind of, I guess, speak back or make, try to um, talking to each other about like what um, I guess cannot be said or cannot be um, or, or not that it cannot be said or cannot be written, but what is difficult to kind of, I guess, process in, in, in some ways, right? Like some of it is in, like Blair says, like it's in the loops, it's in the, um, the repetition, it's in the, um, so that the, um, what is presented back is like, yeah, maybe you just got to feel it instead of saying it, or maybe you just got to like, maybe it's the energy, um, you know, between us on the stage or maybe it's like how it feels to speak into that mic in the purple curtain like um which um yeah I know for me it's one of the I guess the there's a lot of difficult things obviously about living in a pandemic but um that is one of the the um one of the difficult thing difficult things um regarding our work um and the the moment, I guess, is that those kind of unspeakable, unsaid uh, things that happen, um, you know, kind of, they, I mean, yeah, they don't happen anymore because we aren't in front of each other. Um, and there are obviously still things that do happen, but like the, um, that, yeah, that does not show up that way. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, Atiyah, would you would like to answer this question live? It says, "Is that?" Oh, it was just it's just um, yeah. to signal to other people that we're answering that question. Ah, okay, okay. all right. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. The next question is, um, firstly, thank you for sharing with us. My question is, how do you take care of yourself while doing this work? Yes. I don't know who want to go on this. It's a hard one to answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, you know, it would be easier to give, you know, an answer that sounds great. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know eat good and get some rest and, you know, all of those things. I mean, of course, all of those things. Yeah. Do it and fit it in. I don't know. I'm just finding, I don't know, grace. Um, is is really important not always easy to give to yourself and other people but I don't know the the just the more and more you know I live on I, I just feel like a part of the the taking care and maybe maybe y'all can agree to disagree is you know um definitely being with each other through all of this bullshit finding out finding out ways to love each other you know through it all that's the best thing that I got I I agree with that. I agree with that. I think yeah, the taking care of is a very difficult concept for me. Um, but but not in a like because uh, I don't want to. But you know, um, but I think you know, I think yeah, all those things are true. It's like yeah, sure, you should absolutely um, you know, do the things that feel good to take care of yourself. Uh, Black Girl Genius Week we definitely be on the like, where's your water? Where's your water? <laughs> like, um, cause you know, I mean it like, you know, I black girl genius week is all physical. So it's like, yeah, where's the water? Cause like you literally just aren't going to be able to get up in the morning. So yeah. But in another way, also, I think what we've realized is that, yeah, it's, it's in the, um, it's, yeah, it's in the relationship. It's in it's in the the you know what's what's between us two, um, and that um, I feel like this is kind of controversial, but like um, you know I think work is just hard sometimes. I don't know, <laughs> like I just you know I just yeah, um, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I get, yeah, I got that from my daddy. Like, I, I think I just, yeah, it's like, yeah. Yep. I work that much, Jessica. And um, here we are, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, were you saying something, Dr. Brown or no? Okay. So I wanted to actually skip the next question. I'll come back to it later, but I think the, a couple of questions after that actually kind of tie in with what you just said, both Blair and uh, Jessica. So I wanted to say, First, there's a comment by Chelsea Borden, which is EGB and Soul Hot move far beyond issues of or lack of physical representation and center the ideological resonances, humors and lives of black girls. In what ways do these values permeate your work, not just methodologically, but also as written text decisions about form? So what choices were made when writing about your work? Are these choices connected? That's one set of questions and then related to this is Tamia Parsons question, which is, I appreciate you all sharing this space and following and allowing vulnerability in its rawest form. A question and practice I have wrestled with in my undergraduate career is as black people navigating academia, how can we do autoethnographic work that is vulnerable and meaningful without exploiting our own trauma to white institutions? So, yeah. Um, the, uh, thank y'all uh, for the for those questions. Um, I'm I'm looking at the one from Parsons. So I'm I'm um, you know I think uh I don't really think of our work in those terms like because I think that our work is for us and it is when I say our work I'm talking about so hot like I think that the what what we write, sing, do, organize um, is, yeah, like it's it's for us. Um, and I think the 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 kind of exploitation of it or the part where it gets murky is when, um, yeah, when it when it's kind of when you kind of uh, tweaking and arranging things so that it kind of fits into like the institutional like this is what I think is the paper, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, as I'm writing my dissertation right now, like, yeah, I, like there are some things in there that are definitely right, vulnerable and, um, you know, delicate, um, but like, those are things that I want to write about. And, um, you know, like, um, help me out Blair. I feel, I feel like it's like, yeah, I feel like the, um, yeah, like I, I feel like the, the I, like it's not to dismiss the, you know, the, the weight of that and like that, you know, those are very real things. Um, so I don't, I don't want it to sound like that. Um, but, you know, this is our work. This is our work. Like, you know, um, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, finding your, your point of, com- yeah, like I wouldn't write about something. I'm like, oh man, I really don't want the, um, you know, like I feel like it's like, these are these it's ours like these are our stories these are things that we um that i that we we did this work <laughs> you know what i mean like we did this work we did this work like um yeah yeah and i feel like that might come with some things that can be i don't know seen as traumatic or trauma and i i don't want to miss that they aren't or maybe not but i think um, I wouldn't say that's less of the focus. I don't know. I think maybe this even ties into um, the the other question too, is that um, I think we're definitely thinking about what stories we want to tell. I mean, I hear that in hearing both, both of you all and knowing maybe even different ways we could tell stories. I think that um, that's where a lot of thought comes to. Um, yeah, I have a good kind of, I guess, example or thing that, has come up over the years uh, with regard to that, um, especially when the um, the big commodification of Black girlhood happened. The dun dun dun, well, the time, the change in times uh, <laughs> happened. You know, we kind of we had a lot of conversations about like you know showing pictures of the girls, like you know that kind of like 
um, and y'all should bring some girls with you to the conference or, you know, you should, you know, like just kind of being resistant to those kinds of things that like, um, mm-hmm. that we would, yeah, like to me, that does sound like exploitation. That does sound like, um, you know, that, that things that like really don't have anything to do with what we're talking about, actually, like, it's kind of, it's like, who is this for? I think it's a good question um, in terms of that, so. Mm-hmm. I'll jump in to say, um, once I got a fancy camera and I know that the, the photographs and the pictures are a part of it. I know it's a major part of it, but, um, aesthetics, nah, you know, I don't even know that I want you to see what I saw because mm-hmm. you can't see what I saw, but I do want you to know that I was here, here that we've been here and I love how Jessica and whoo, Blair and 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 the, all the names are echoing from everybody who who we can hear with us right now in this very moment but maybe you don't even know um, mm-hmm. that we've been here and I think I, I, I try to keep practice as as an amateur as someone who loves the thing and You'll get some with the words that the photo won't be able to capture and vice versa. And I hope you get some dimension um, to what it is that is our life's work. And then you'll be able to get my height and you'll be able to feel the weight of this and you'll be able to get a turn. And I think that's important that you get a turn. Um, and sometimes that will come through an image as invitation on the photograph with the text, the book. Um, mm-hmm some of these publications will be a a particular kind of uh, cartography. And um, you got to know that we started in a deep end and uh, we fish underwater and and then maybe you'll come to, uh, or maybe you won't. And sometimes we ask that you do not show up. And Mm -hmm. uh, Darrell Collier pinned that for us. And Mm -hmm. I just think that um, it's complicated. but then it's so simple when you in a collective who's like, you know, we black, <laughs> we gonna stay black. And yeah. uh, this is for us. And we know that us means um, ourselves, the girls, now our daughters. And when we say for generations and generations, that's very real and so hot because the girls we knew at 12 are also coming with their daughters and great expectations, not for them to have the same thing they had in so hot, but to have some kind of time like we had in so hot. And I think that um, we talk a lot about what we want shared, what will, you know, stay with us. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, the thing that, that most excites me, again, I'll never know because uh, for whatever reason, my age, uh, my gender identity, uh, my whatever, you know, it was shared between two girls after Soul Hot on the ride home on the bus. And Dr. B will never know, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But I know, as Jessica said, you know, um, what's been keeping us through the pandemic is for me, part of that is for whatever the choices we made. <laughs> So hot time is real. As black, as Jessica said, Black Girl Genius Week is is kind of a seven day endurance performance project that just wears you out. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, uh, I take rest and care sometimes in the stillness of of remembering and trying to remember each Black girl that I've met face to face over almost two decades of doing so high. And uh, that will keep you going. That may not always justify the choices you made mm-hmm. on the page or in person, but it'll, it'll certainly um, move us beyond the issues as you raise. Um, it'll, it'll go, has to go beyond representation and the human mm-hmm. um, the things that are listed, I believe, in Chelsea's question. Um, 
So I'll just say that. Thank you. And then I wanted to uh, actually read out a comment, which I thought was great, is I appreciate the sentiment or, you know, I appreciate that Soul Hot is not a program or intervention. And then they have a question, I believe, which is how can others make sure that their efforts are following suit? And then Sujin Green has this question that what are ways that we as graduate students, especially graduate students of color, can actively resist permission seeking behaviors as we navigate the academy when pursuing projects that don't fit neatly within a single discipline? So I guess that, and then there is another related question. So I'm just gonna read it, but take it, you know, you can uh, respond to them separately, obviously. Thank you so much for talking. This is Johanna Bermudez. Thank you so much for talking and sharing with us in that vein of the above questions. How do we re-enter the hostile world of ac academia and do things like dissertations or other forms of scholarly writing about the experiences that matter to us? Sometimes it feels like our truths don't fit with mold and will always be met with resistance. So I guess both of those, right? The permission seeking, how do we resist that? And then, yeah. Um, I wanna first say it is hard. It's, um, it's a very difficult um, task. And I, uh, I know that because right, my dissertation advisor is Dr. Brown and like I never had to ask permission and it was still hard to not ask for permission. Like um, it's definitely, um, yeah, like I, I, know, I know how that happens. I think the, the thing that I just keep telling myself and that like has been told um, over and over again from all the people, like um, all the people who have gotten their uh, PhDs before me that were in so hot. It's like, just write the thing that you want to write. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's just what I keep hearing. And I, I feel like that is the thing that's one going to get written. And it's also the thing that's, um, that's going to also like help with some of the other things like does it feel like exploitation or does it feel like this was not what I should have done or does this fit here does it fit there like um I think you kind of like gotta be in your gut about it um mm -hmm. your heart and your yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Jessica, you you in it, in it. Uh, I'm definitely reflecting. <laughs> and I think, you know, I don't know if you would agree. Maybe you, you know, have different opinions in this moment. Um, I think it's a process too. It's a process. <laughs> it just, I don't know, try to, you know, just try to be in that, that process if possible. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because I think you you go in and out of the moments too. I mean, like, you know, kind of like you were saying, you know, should I, should I not, you know? Um, and I think all of those things are okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, yeah, we're in, like I said, I'm like, I'm in best case scenario. Like I have <laughs> a dissertation advisor who is like, yeah, just write, like you should just do the thing. And it's still, um, you know, we have definitely been schooled to do that, to mm -hmm. ask for permission, to, um, and it's a difficult thing to kind of break, but I think, I mean, I think also in the end, like, I'm like, well, first of all, because the project is so, so big, you have to do it. So like, you're going to end up right. You're going to probably just end up writing that thing you want to write anyway. Cause it's, I mean, like, that's the thing that's going to get it. Um, right. yeah. Yeah. Where it doesn't feel so gross after you wrote it because you wanted to. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I would just also add to that too, like, you know, we have um, relationships formed over time and I mean, I will include myself, not a dissertation, but I think, you know, every time you sit down to maybe, you know, write the thing or sing the thing or show up to studio or make the thing, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's like also so clear to us when it's not so hot. And so it's like, uh, uh, who else showed up to the room, to the computer? Who else got in this draft? And mm -hmm. 
those voice, the disciplines are disciplinary logic, binary thought is so loud in this thing. We'd be like, oh, how the violence of, of the institution, um, mm -hmm. Western logic, how did that, you know, um, mm -hmm. look at that just showing up so, <laughs> so, so loud on the page there when we you know, uh, aim to do this other thing, maybe. And so I think um, one of the things that that somebody asked sort of earlier, but you know, this radical honesty that we insist on is just like you let's look at let's look at what is showing up, all the things showing up. Mm -hmm. And then um, part of my desire to stay in the academy is to absolutely turn it out. So some of those things that show up in spite of Soul Hot, in, in spite of, you know, one civic engagement grant in spite of a line on commitments to public humanities like um uh the violent the, the violence um is still there there's there is much to be undone uh, so we do our part and we do our best mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in solidarity so Thank you, thank you. Blair, were you saying something? I saw your light come I was on. Just, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling what everybody else said. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. I'll move on, but thank you, um, Dr. Brown, for that response. Um, so there's another question from Poonam Argade, which is a thank you for sharing this beautiful work. My question is about the use of music as a channel, method for the expression of black girlhood. How did you come to this form? How did the collaborative aspects of it emerge? And what have been some of the most significant milestones in the journey to create and circulate that we can now hear and that we can now hear on SoundCloud by We Levitate? Uh, okay. Yeah, and then speaking of hearing, there's a question about listening, but let's maybe get that, I guess. Yeah, we have a couple more minutes. So maybe I should just also read out this other one, practice of listening still implies an inherent passivity. Listening in this project takes a very different form. This project asserts listening to voices often underheard here, especially black girls is critical. And oh, okay, that's not a question, okay. And then we go to, um, as you all have done work on black girlhood, what has been some of the most challenging aspects of your work, whether gathering data ethnographically or mining through the archives. And then there's a shout out to Blair, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go ahead. How did the music come about? We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. I love to tell the story. Soul Hot has a band called We Levitate. Music has always been a part of Soul Hot. Um, mm -hmm. I like to say they're homegirls we've never met in person, but who have been a part of Soul Hot since day one, like Beyonce. Uh, there's. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and many others, which we could uh, name, uh, but we, as was referenced earlier, I mean, a shorter version of the story is that we experienced heartbreak. Uh, anybody who's organized with other folks, people, uh, places, you know, the organizing uh, can just be a lot. Sometimes we are facing organizational dilemmas, uh, limits, constraints around resources, time, energy, uh, burnout. Some may even say we have been doing this thing for over a decade um, in, in a place that, that wasn't yeah, set up for what it was that we were doing. And so uh, it, uh, and a lot of other things um, that was hard, um, heartache. And I remember, I think Jessica tells a better version of the story was like, maybe this should just be over. You know, it was like real close. We were on the edge. Uh, and Again, a lot of pulling says time, like a lot of also things were happening alongside that heartbreak. Um, Blair was with us, but not physically with us, sending music. Who, you know, like it's such, a, I, I tell this story, like professors get a lot of different messages in their <laughs> inbox. And, and that was the first only, and I probably, you know, time that I, I got music. Um, that was original in the inbox. So of course I'm stopping everything to listen to what this is. Um, and then we needed a way um, to, come, to come back to each other because 
some folks was like, yeah, this is really whack and, 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 um, and I'm here to, to work through all of this. And so one of the constant refrains of that time for as hard as it was, was that we don't want to take each other for granted. Mm-hmm. That came up um, so much and we um, didn't want to do that. So we, we chose a form music. None of us are trained musicians. I, in a lot of ways, I think it could have been <laughs> a couple of different modalities that none of us could claim a, a kind of expertise in because mm-hmm. we needed that kind of humility to have the honesty after a long time of being with each other to say, how do you turn this thing on? I mean, really, that wasn't about Ableton. That was really about your spirit, mm-hmm. you know? And so we, um, we had, we, I don't remember how we got to actually recording. It was like, what are we going to say to each other? We had no idea. Yeah. Like one of those moments, like we had no idea what we wanted to say to each other. We was in my office. I was it one of Blair's? I don't remember. We had an instrumental, and then it was like step into the mic and speak your piece. Mm-hmm. And from that, another ten years. Mm-hmm. Like, kind of. We used to start our sessions by bringing like a song that you like. Mm-hmm. You had to kind of like share I mean yeah like we had to get to know each other mm-hmm. again again and then again <laughs> again oh, like we had to like yeah and then it's like wow because black girl genius we was good at it like because <laughs> I'm like how do we get from there to SoundCloud Ooh, I mean we actually uh, we took up study with local hip-hop artists uh, in Champagne. we had connections with um I, I like to say I took up night class. I started because I was so worn out by what we were practicing in Soul Hot as collectivity that mm-hmm. I was like, I know, you know, I'm not ever claiming Soul Hot's the only thing going on. So mm-hmm. where can I can I see how other folks are making collective work? And um, in Champagne, Champagne has a vibrant hip hop scene, um, mm-hmm. and they they you know they were collectively uh, creating art together, and it was a I took, they were coming to my classes at the university and I was going to their shows at night, taking Mm -hmm. notes. And literally, yeah, we was also then holding class, posted up, Mm -hmm. theorizing what it was that we was all doing, our our hardest dilemmas, um, making what was present, said, verbally felt, um, extending the cipher, meeting with each other. Then it became some kind of um, skill building and skill training. And it was like, oh, listen to this sound. And then we met up with some producers. They was like, you can't make a sound like that. And we was like, we black girls, <laughs> we make whatever sound we need. And, right. and, and you know, and then that caught, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing, it's an amazing story. And then somehow we, um, we got merch and we start doing performances. I mean, um, because we have more and more to say through music and, and being a band gave us another iteration formation of homegirling that felt sacred and and amazing. And then of course we, you know, the thing about Soul Hide is, is is in the education of the storyteller. So Tony K short story, we read that. Like if your friends don't know it that, then you don't know it. So once we had a studio practice and a song to share, of course the first audience we excited to bring it to is the girls. And of course they ready. Mm-hmm. You know, they like, oh, go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so it just kept it's one one version of the story. Yes. Yes. Jessica, were you going to say something? Your light came on right now. So I just wanted to check in before. No? Oh no, I just said yes. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Um well. That actually, thank you for sharing that, uh, Dr. Brown, that actually that part of the story, because a number of folks who are here today won't be there tomorrow morning. Okay. But, but it'll be wonderful to hear uh, more about it. We do have one more question, but we are past time. So, mm-hmm. and, you know, so I'm going to save that for tomorrow. It's um, the question is about listening uh, oh. and listening as methodology, unless you wanted to comment on it, which we still have the, um, you know, the webinar with us here, but it's about um, listening as 
um, let me, yeah. Uh, how can and does listening work as active and agentic? How is listening generative as a methodological practice, mode of living theory? And then there is another question by Easton Davis, which is, um, are there particular moments that have shaped and anchored you to the creative oh, synergy yes. that is present and ongoing and more colorful? Would you con consider invoking these moments as holy ritual as referenced by Dr. Smith present when you prepare to write, write or teach? So those, but um, if you wanted to say anything about any either of those. We got 50 plus folks. Jessica has the baby. How are you with time? Are you good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jessica, are you good? Yeah, no, I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah. So, so. I, I, you know, for folks willing to stay, um, the, the listening it, is really important as a practice, um, particularly because uh, so hot, like when you're in a role, you really have to, this is what uh, one of our favorite producers, Ro, taught me when making music is to tune my ear. Mm -hmm. And as someone who can't read music or even know what that means musically, I know what that means in Soul Hot. That means like there's 50 girls and I'm listening to the one who's right up in front of my face. And I'm also listening to the one who hasn't spoke for three sessions at the same time, as well as I'm listening for uh, the intercom to tell me that the pizza is here, as well as, you know, I'm listening to the home girl who's like, Dr. B, we got, you know, so um, it's a deep listening uh, and there are practices and, and teachers there and, I, and I'm into it. Um, and uh, the work outside uh, has really gotten me into like field recordings and, and mm -hmm. listening with so much intention in terms of, of of learning songs um, by heart uh, of the birds and then also of those in Soul Hot. It's listening across time. So, uh, you know, when Blair sends me a paper uh, that is citing the same Sonia Sanchez poem that I cited in my first year grad seminar, you know, I got to call people uh, who were there to believe it because otherwise it's like how'd you hear me um it's listening for folks who you know who who are on their way um so it, it's it's across time it's across space it's listening to where we're from in our voices mm -hmm. uh in our speech in our dialect um and, and that's beautiful and i can hear right now as i'm even saying this sweet honey in a rock because uh, um, of that practice. So that's my take on listening. It's a lot of things, challenges, whatever they are, um, the joy outweighs it for me. And then I'm gonna just get into the particular moments, uh, holy ritual. Uh, every time we do the bati dance uh, is rituals and soul hot. We come together through movement and dance. Um, that for me is 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 one way we keep very um, sacred becoming a we. This is not to be uh, assumed <laughs> or taken for yeah. granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think. Yeah, a lot of. Um, yeah, we are we are huge on ritual. So that yeah, I feel like that happens with the bati dance or um, check in, um, and even um, we do a ritual um, called just because. And so it's like everybody is doing a poem and we're sharing, and you know we're like yeah we're we're preparing to be with each other. Um, and I I do think. Um, it was, yeah, it's in this question. It was also in another question, but I do think that it is kind of across the board. So it's in so hot. And it's also when I'm writing and it's also when I'm, you know, texting Dr. Brown and Blair, like, Hey, so this is what I'm thinking about. Like it's, it's all in that, like the same, I guess, spirit is in it. Um, 
it doesn't yeah like so hot is in the space and so hot is also not in the space too Absolutely. when talking about so hot yeah. and, and I, I love the way it, it changes over time you know too regardless of where we at and we can you know um stay with a lot of those things you know I for one I'm thinking about the walking and Meadowbrook um mm-hmm. <laughs> as oh a, man well um so many things well and, you know even thinking about how we're taking care of ourselves sometimes you know maybe even doing things we don't even know that it's taking care of but it is mm-hmm. yeah so many rituals so many ones that are even unsaid that yeah we just we do it again and again until we can't do it no more mm-hmm. that's true okay. Well, thank you all for these, for your response, for your labor of love, thank you. for, for sharing with us your ways of being, methods from your heart. And, you know, it has clearly been inspiring and people are waiting, I know, with more questions. Mm-hmm. So um, I know several of you are there tomorrow. So we'll see all of you. Thank you again.